Hello everyone, this is Grace. It is April the 16th, 2021, and today we're going to be taking another look at the Feast of Pentecost. And um, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to read through the wave sheaf because the count begins through, um, with the wave sheaf. So we'll read through this and then we'll continue on into the Pentecost. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come into the land which I gave unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the firstfruits of your harvest unto the priest. And ye shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath the priest shall wave it. And ye shall offer that day when ye wave the sheaf of the lamb, and ye wave the sheaf and he lamb without blemish, of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. And the meat offering thereof shall be two tenths deal of fine flour mingled with oil, an offering made by fire unto the Lord for a sweet savour. And the drink offering thereof shall be of wine, the fourth part of an hen. And ye shall eat neither bread nor parched corn nor green ears until the self same day that ye have brought an offering unto your God. It shall be a statute for ever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. I did, um, by the way, do this, and I think you should as well. Um, I, I knew for so long I don't know if I'll get my blessing but you certainly will get yours I think that you should do it um, it's a general consensus when we know better we do better this is um this is actually one of the reasons why uh, <laughs> not to go off in a tangent or anything like that but you know, that's one of the reasons why God finds it hard to use pastors, you know, because of their resistance to, because they accept that the word is inerrant, they, it's difficult for them to change with new knowledge and new growth. Um, and I'm not finding fault with them. There's a difference between putting your toe in the water and getting your toe bit off and then putting your toe in the water and watching 600 parishioners uh, sticking their toe in the water behind you. I'm not finding fault with the pastors or anything like that. But just because the Word of God doesn't change, that doesn't mean that our understanding and um, our... Um, <laughs> Well, I think understanding is the best word. Our understanding of it doesn't change. It's actually to the contrary. Our understanding should always be growing. And um, unfortunately, too many people find find a way to find fault with that, which is, is understandable. It's just a natural thing to do, um, to think that if you didn't have it all up front, it was wrong. But it's just not. It's just never been the case. And we've got thousands of years of history to show that. So don't do like I did <laughs> and wait and not do this. Uh, yeah, I made the mistake of waiting because uh, to me to change the feast days was a big deal. Uh, it was a big thing. So, yeah, I understand it. But now that we know better, let's do better. Let's do better. Okay. So let's go on. And you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. <laughs> My first video was about the Pentecost. <laughs> Uh, so I have a few reservations about correcting this, <laughs> but it is what it is. It has to be corrected. My problem was, let's read it again. It says, and you shall count unto you, to, unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the wave offering. Now I interpreted this to be the morrow after the Sabbath is the day you brought the wave offering which it is, but that's not what it says. This word, when you break it down, 
it actually is since you bought the wave sheaf. I have some scriptures that I pulled up here with that those same words. I mean, with those. Hold on, let's go back and look at it because I didn't highlight them. It's H four four eight zero and H three one one seven, and it's gonna say since since the day that they were upon the earth, since you brought the wave offering. Hold on. Okay. And here is Leviticus 22, 27. When a bullock or a sheep or a goat is brought forth, then it shall be seven days under the dam. And from the eighth day and thenceforth, it shall be accepted for an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So going forward from the eighth day, since the eighth day and then forth, and thenceforth, or from the eighth day and going forward, it shall be accepted. Um, and it was so, I'm sorry, hold on, there's so much noise outside, just a moment. And it was so that, and it was so that all that saw it said, there was no such deed done nor seen from the day that the children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt unto this day. Consider of it, take advice, and speak your minds. Since no such deed done nor seen since the day that the children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt. So, yeah, we're not going to read that. We'll just, um, I don't think I need that in there anyway. No, we don't. You don't need that. We'll just skip it. Anyway. And you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the wave sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. So you are counting from the day that you brought the wave sheaf. From the day after the Sabbath, after you bought the wave sheaf. I'll show you. <laughs> Let's read it one more time. And then I'm going to go to the calendar and show you. And ye shall count. Unto you. From the day after. From the morrow. After the Sabbath. Since the day. You brought the wave sheaf. Of the wave offering. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the day. After the seven Sabbath. And we're going to put a period there. So let's look at the calendar. Now this, I got this on downloads.com or downloads.net, whichever one it is now. I think they changed it. It's Kalindus. So we have the 26. We're just going to say the 26 is the Passover, right? And then the wave sheaf was, let's go back. It's after the Sabbath. We're going to change that because we know Jesus fulfilled it on the Sabbath. So we're going to say it's the 27th because we want to use the actual type as the example. Hold on a moment. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. Okay, so the Sabbath is the 27th. The ending of the Sabbath would be on Saturday night and it would end on Sunday morning. So that's our wave sheaf offering. It ends on Sunday morning, the 28th. And you are going to count from the day after the Sabbath, since the day that you brought the wave sheaf offering, seven, seven, seven Sabbaths complete. If this is the day of the wave offering, the Sabbath after the wave offering is the third. The morrow after the Sabbath that we brought the wave offering is the fourth. 
Now all we need to do is count our seven Sabbaths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In order for the seventh Sabbath to be complete, we must count into the next day. So Saturday night ends on Sunday morning. That would be our seven Sabbaths complete. So let's find out what we do after that. Even unto the day after the seventh Sabbath shall even unto the day after the seventh Sabbath. Period. After the seventh Sabbath, period. And ye shall count fifty days. Why did I change that? Because this word right here is exactly the same as this word. And you shall count 50 days. And then you shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. So we've already counted. We know where our way sheaf was. We started from the day after the Sabbath. After we brought the way sheaf. And we counted seven complete Sabbaths. Up to the day after the seventh Sabbath. Now all we have to do is count our 50 days. Hold on. Okay, so let's count. So, our day ended on the morning of the 23rd. So we have half a day here on the 23rd. So half a day here, and it ends. Our first day would be the 24th. Our second day would be the 25th. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. That's eight days there. And we'll move into June. There's 30, day, 30 days in June. Um, that's 38 days. 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. And our 50th day count would end on the morning of the 12th. So now... Let me tell you what led up to this study, me having to do this study again. We're going to come back to this in a moment. I was studying through the scriptures, <laughs> and I came across this. And speaking to the priests, which were in the house of the Lord of hosts, and to the prophet, saying, Should I... Let's start from verse 1. And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Darius that the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah in the fourth day of the ninth month, even in Chislu, when they had seen, when they had sent it to the house of God, Sherezer and Ramalek, and their men to pray before the Lord, and to speak unto the priests which were in the house of the Lord of hosts, and to the prophets, saying, should I weep in the fifth month, separating myself as I have done these so many years? Then came the word of the Lord of hosts unto me, saying, Speaking to all the children of the land and to the priests, saying, When you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, even those seventy years, did ye at all fast unto me, even to me? When I saw that, I almost freaked out. I was like, they are hiding a festival in the fifth month. Seventy years they fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month. And I don't know about you, but I had not come across any festivals or anything like that in the fifth or seventh month. I'm going to tell you another little secret about me. I'll tell you a little something. Now I mention this to you guys every once in a while because there are just certain things that I knew before coming into the church that I don't really have an explanation for. I knew that Jesus was um, the lamb was like a year old, so Jesus had preached for a, a year, right? And I I knew that. I also knew one of the things I knew. I don't think I didn't. I know I didn't tell you guys this because I forgot it. Was I knew what the pit was, 
um, of Revelation 9. I knew exactly what that was and what it meant. But I listened to so many other teachers talk about it that I just forgot. And I still to this day can't remember what I knew. But one of the things I also knew before I came into the church was that the Feast of Pentecost was a fast. When I first started keeping the feast dates, I looked for it. I couldn't find it. I even It bothered me so much that even a couple of years ago, maybe a year or two ago, I looked for it again. The only thing I could find was um, was that there was um, something in Jewish writing that said that the firstborn was supposed to fast. But I did look for it. I searched diligently looking for something that said that you were supposed to fast on the Feast of Pentecost. And I was very disappointed because I couldn't find it because it was one of those things that I thought that I knew. But then I was kind of consoled when I got to the Day of Atonement and I saw that you were supposed to fast or afflict your soul, which is pretty much the same thing, um, depending upon who, just, you know, make your own decisions. I'll tell you what I think. But afflict your soul. Um, and so I thought, okay, well, maybe I got it confused. Maybe it was the Day of Atonement. And so I kind of let it go. But it, it, like I said, I even looked it up again a couple of years ago because it just bothered me so. Uh, but it is a fast. It is a day of fasting. And, um, and it is in the fifth month. So let's go back to the calendar. So let me show you guys here. So July 12th is our day, right? We're going to go back to March. So we're going to look at the next new moon. There's the first month. There's the second month. There's the third month. There's the fourth month. And there's the fifth month. And our date was July the 12th. And it's always going to be the, the in the fifth month. Because... If you actually take the time to um, do the calculations and stuff, here I've got it up here. I've got it up still. It comes to three months and two weeks or 106 days. And if you calculate it correctly from the Passover, which is two is gonna be halfway into the month because it's going to be right around the full moon, right? Then you're always going to have a couple of days into the fifth month that this festival is going to be. I tested it over and over with different years. It has always come out to end the fifth month, each and every time. The 106 days I calculated is from the the um, wave sheaf by the way so it's going to be more or less i calculated it from march the 28th 126 days from the um the count the original count so but um yeah so it's always going to be in the fifth month now, let me go ahead and we'll take a quick detour here before we talk about the fast. I'm going to tell you, I was, I'm not sure. I don't want to talk a lot about this, but I do want to say a little something I was actually, we're gonna, we're the Church of Smyrna. Okay, the 144,000 is um, the Church of Smyrna. Now, I'm not, I can't say a lot about these churches. There may be, of course, there may be elements of us in other churches, and there may be some of us that fall within the other churches. But for now, I'm just talking about the Church of Smyrna. Okay? So. In the Church of Smyrna, you have this 10-day time frame right here. It says you shall have tribulation 10 days. So, <laughs> inevitably, 
somebody's going to come and say, oh, that's the 10 days before the Pentecost. This is what they're going to say. This is why I'm warning you in advance. That's not what it is. Okay. It's not. We, we just did a study about the Passover. I, I have to explain it to you just in case you haven't seen the video because it's essential that you know this in order to try and keep yourself from being deceived. Okay. We just did a study about the Passover and we discovered that the Passover it really doesn't have anything to do with unleavened bread. The Passover is when people, a nation comes under judgment. With the Passover of God, it was only the firstborn, but that was an antitype. With Sodom and Gomorrah, it was the entire nation. It, the entire nation is coming under judgment. And the Passover, in essence, is telling you to stop sinning so that you won't be judged. so that Or you'll be passed over during the time of judgment. That's what it's telling you during the Passover. So... Or if we, we know from Ezekiel that there is going to be a Passover for us. We know, we can, we can use discernment and know that as the, um, <laughs> I don't want to say that if we're, if we're celebrating, if we are the type if we are the type for the Pentecost, it would stand to reason that rather than be judged and passed over in the seventh month, we are going to be judged and passed over sometime during that fifth month time, that time frame, right? We, th there has to be a type. And it's us. We're the type. It's our time to be passed over as shown in the ceiling of Ezekiel 9. So the 10 days is just telling us there's only two. There may be other days. Look, you guys don't know this, but I'm sickly. <laughs> I'm sickly, okay? And so I haven't, that's why I've been gone. I haven't been able to study a lot, okay? But, so I can't go in and get you the details. I couldn't or I wouldn't have been able to do the study. I just have to give you what I know now without going into great detail. Or, the, or you've been waiting until whenever I could get it done. Okay? So let's just take what we have. So I know that there are two 10-day time spans. One is the 10 days um, the, the lamb is set up on the 10th day. But then you also have the Day of Atonement, which is the 10th day. This is referring us back to that 10th day. Now, this isn't our 10th day. Our 10th day is probably more likely uh, when you look at Ezekiel. Um, when you look at Ezekiel, it was ten, there was like a 10 year time span where Nebuchadnezzar came and destroyed Babylon. So it's probably that 10 year time span. But like I said, I haven't had a chance to look at all of that. But the point of this, this point of this is it could be the 10 year time span or the 10 years that we have, um, which I'll look into more later. But it is to refer you back to the antitype of the Day of Atonement so that you can know that you're going to have 10 days. The day of judgment is going to come upon you then. Ten days, ten years, however you want to look at it. There is no ten day time period in the Feast of Pentecost. But some joker is going to tell you that there is. So just don't, don't fall for it. Don't do it. I'm telling you in advance. Don't do it. Because somebody's going to say it. And they're probably going to backdate it. Is probably what they're gonna do. So anyway, but it is a fast. Oh, there is another scripture I have here. This one right here. <laughs> this is one of the scriptures that I used the last time to support um, the fourth month, but I calculated wrong. 
He said, say, say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. He said this during the first month. If you add up the first month and four months, it's the fifth month. I put it in the fourth month. That wasn't correct. There are yet four months. That would take you into the fifth month. And then the fast. <laughs> so this is Ezra. This was Ezra. He said, Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of... Ezra had gotten um, permission from the king to go back and work on the temple of God. But he was afraid to ask him for guards because he had been bragging to him about how powerful God was. And he was like, yeah, those who love God are blessed and those who aren't don't love God are cursed and, and evil comes among them. <laughs> and, right? and, um, and so when he sent him, he was afraid to ask for guards to escort him. And so he, pro him, he and the people proclaimed a, flat, a fast um, to ask for help from God. So he said, Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava, that we might afflict ourselves before our God to seek him, seek of him a right way for us and for our little ones and for our substance. So I use that because I told you it just I just referred you back to the Day of Atonement where it said where the Day of Atonement says afflict your souls. And also in the tenth day of the seventh month there shall be a day of atonement it shall be a holy convocation unto you and you shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord so now I'm going to offer you a little bit of advice about the fast because if I don't who will right who's going to so in the Bible, let me see if I put any scriptures in here. Um, I did not. And, well, that's okay. I'm going to tell you. In the Bible, um, it's only those that are 20 years old and up that are counted um, under... What is the scripture? I'm trying to think of the scripture. Numbers. Numbers. There's a scripture. I'm pretty sure, like in the wilderness in Mount Sinai, when they wandered in the desert for 20 years and up, and you could check this, for 40 years, when they wandered in the desert for 40 years, it was only those 20 years old and older that had to die. Everyone under 20 years, they all got to live and go into the promised land. When the men are numbered for war, they are um, numbered from 20 years old and up. In Leviticus, hold on, I might have a scripture in here from, hold on. Hold on. I don't have a scripture in here. In Leviticus, when they, um, when they, um, hold on, I'm going to pause you. I'm going to have to find that scripture. Give me just a moment. Okay, it's Leviticus 27. Okay, when they number the people, they, they do an estimate of a shekel. Um, of per person age 20 and up. I'm speaking to the children of Israel and saying to them, when a man shall make a... No. Um, 
But yeah, if when a man shall make a singular vow, the person shall be for the Lord by thy estimation. And thy estimation shall be of the male from 20 years old, even unto 60 years old. Even thy estimation shall be 50 shekels of silver after the shekel of the sanctuary. And if it be a female, then thy estimation shall be 30 shekels. And if it be from 5 years old, even unto 20 years old, then thy estimation shall be of a male 20 shekels. And for the female, ten shekels. And if it be from a month old, even unto five years, then thy estimation should be of the male five shekels of silvers. And for the female, thy estimation should be three shekels. That wasn't the scripture I wanted. I'm not gonna look at I'm not gonna look for it anymore. We're just gonna go back to numbers where they number the men twenty years old and up. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the tabernacle of the congregation, on the first day of the second month, in the second year, after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Take ye the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel, after their families, by the house of their fathers, with the number of, of their names, every male of their poles, from twenty years old and upwards, all that are able to go forth in war to Israel. Thou and Aaron shall number them by their armies." Hold on. Okay, we're going to go to Numbers 14, 28. Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in the wilderness, and all that were numbered of you according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me, doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. But your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. So 20 years old and upward is a consistent theme for coming under judgment with the Lord. So, given this, I would say to you, I'm just advising you. I can't tell you what to do. You know what I know. And if you know more than I do, then do what's, what you know to be best. This is what you have to do. So, I would advise 20 years old and upward should fast. It is a fast day. It's always been a fast day, by the way. It's always been a fast day. Um, so if you're if if you have if you're over 20 years old, or if you have children that are over 20, they should all fast. Below that, the children you you have to go by reason. They have to go by reason. Um, you have to go by You have to go by logic, okay? If they want to fast, if they don't want to fast, don't make them. I would advise that, first of all. If they don't want to fast, don't make them. But if you have an older child, a teenager or someone that's 19 or 20, or 19 going on 20 or something like that, and they want to fast, then let them fast and explain it to them. They're old enough to understand. Younger kids, younger children, which may not fully understand, maybe they just want to maybe cut down on their meals or something like that. Play it by ear. Another thing you want to do is you want to take your medicine. You want to take your medicine without exception and without guilt. Don't guilt yourself for doing that. I know you want to do things perfectly. We all feel that way. I just told you, I am sickly. I told you that actually for a reason. I told you that because I have this little concoction that I make up for myself daily. Right? It's not prescriptions. Um, this little concoction. But it's, um, it helps me. It helps me immensely. But it's, it's orange juice, and then I put like a couple of green drinks in there. I have this vitamin, like this Herbarium mixture that's high vitamin C. I put some of that in there, and then I take a bunch of vitamins with it. <laughs> but it's not a prescription. But I was thinking to myself, 
I was going to, I was thinking to myself, well, I could take it at the end of the day and end of the first day and then not take it again until the beginning, uh, until after the fast. And the Holy Spirit was like, no, do not do that. Do not do that. Here is the best rule to follow because I can't answer all of your questions about a fast. Let's just, this, this should answer any questions that you have. You should be able to answer it for yourself. Let's use reason. If you have a child and you say to that child, go out into the field and work for me. And the child says, okay. And they go out and work. And then they come to you and say, I have to stop work for a moment in order to take my prescription to remain well. Are you going to deny that child? No, you're going to say, okay. And, and the, well, they'll, they'll say, I have to stop for a moment to take my prescription, and then I'll go back out and return to work. <laughs> you're not going to deny that child. And you're not better, you're not kinder, get more loving than God. You're just not. So if you would do it as a loving parent, it's a fair assumption in this particular case anyway, we know that we do not reason as God reasons, but it's fair to say that um, it would be okay with God in, in this particular case. If you're trying to work out what you should or should not be doing, just don't deceive yourself. We like to deceive ourselves and, and we pretend like we're doing something that we're not. Don't deceive yourself. It won't come out. It won't avail you because God knows your heart. Okay? But take your medicine and don't feel guilty about it. But fast. I would advise you to fast, most definitely. Because this is our day of atonement. This is our day of atonement. This is our Passover. We are going to be the type of Pentecost. Okay, so I don't think there was anything else I had to say about that. I think that was it. Hold on, I'll pause you and see. Hold on. Well, um, I couldn't really. The only thing I could think of that I will, I will kind of correct myself on is the um, the ten years. Uh, that I mentioned before in Ezekiel, understand that the 10 years may apply to us as far as the tribulation, but the destruction of America and the Passover that goes for the Christians, that, I'm not saying that applies to us. I'm not. Don't get me wrong. You know, see, everything, everything has to be qualified nowadays because of this nonsense that they call the rapture. And so I feel obligated to explain to you. <laughs> I just, I would not explain, I wouldn't do it now otherwise. It's just so, they, tr it's, it's just vanity. This is what it is. It's just a vanity. The Bible tells you not to feel bad about persecution. It says count it a blessing. It says all of the godly will suffer persecution. The servant is not better than the master. It, it, it never tells you to worry about persecution. But what do, the, what, is, what do Americans say? What do the blessed say? Oh, I'm better than you. I'm better than you. Therefore, I'm going to be taken up because God loves me more. And so I don't have to suffer persecution. I'm better than all of those people over in, um, in, the, in the Muslim countries that are suffering because of their religion. They have to suffer. Jesus had to suffer. Everybody has to suffer, but if you happen to be born a Christian in America, then uh, you're just so special. 
you know, that you just get to go up with no persecution whatsoever and toss out the Bible, by the way, because the Bible doesn't teach anything like that. But just toss that out because everybody here is just so special. I didn't, I didn't forgot what I was going to say with <laughs> messing around with these raptures, with the raptures. I really did. <laughs> anyway, wait. <laughs> oh, the Bible. When, <laughs> when it comes to us being um, the 10 days and stuff like that, it says here, if you look at the church of Smyrna, it tells you, it really gives the impression that, um, it really gives you impression that we we actually die, we just don't die. Kind of like um, Moses. Moses was in the ark for 40 days, for 40 nights. We know that means his life was sustained. Uh, he would have died except for the fact that the Lord maintained his life for him. When you look at the scriptures pertaining to the 144,000. It gives you the impression, the, all of the ones that I've looked at, and I'll look at this one, and then we'll go to Luke as well, and we'll look at that real quick. Um, when you look at the scriptures pertaining to us, it does seem to imply that we are going to be killed, be thrown into the fiery furnace. Here it says, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. When we go to Luke, in Luke, I think it was 23, he says, Into the hands I command my spirit. And I'm going to find it. Well, I checked 23 first. I didn't see it there. Hold on. Here it is right here. <laughs> I had the right book the first time. Um, he says, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Well, we all know that the Spirit, no, you give up the ghost first and then the Spirit returns to the Father. However, you have Jesus on the cross about to die, but before he dies, he sends his, he commands his Spirit into, unto the Father. And then he gave up the ghost. It seems like we are all literally put to death, but we just don't die. We just actually go up to heaven instead of dying. So when they when they try to they try to mislead you into belief. Anyway, the point wasn't the, I wasn't trying to make a point about the the rapture people. That just came to my mind that I feel like I have to explain. Um, the thing is, is that when I said the ten years, we will have the ten years of tribulation okay we'll go through the tribulation part of it but that doesn't I don't think we're gonna be here for the actual destruction of the um, destruction of America now I'm not 100% sure on that like I said yeah I have done more videos had I had time to actually look into these things and this one I wasn't able to look into a, a lot I just, you just have to get the basics. This just has to be the way it is. Um, but currently, I'm not under the impression that the 144,000 are here at the time that America is destroyed. So that was the only thing I had to add. I hope I didn't make things more confusing by adding that. 
but I did feel like it was, I, I wanted to clarify that. I will leave it at that, and um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.